Hello, welcome back to Auto Pop Culture. Today we're going over Sam Smith's fourth album called Gloria. So this is an album that I had no idea was being made. I know that there, well, I know that there was supposed to be, uh, it feels like, so Sam's rollout of albums after, um, actually after Thrill of It All, because I felt like Love Goes was going, was all, was kind of all over the place because it seems like they wanted to do one aspect of the album but then ended up doing a different type of aspect of the album because I knew it was supposed to be called um, To Die For. And I really liked that. And I felt like the single that was pretty much piano was really great. And I thought they sounded great with that. But then it kind of sw it switched to more of a leaning towards the UK sound, and which I wasn't mad about, but I also understand it's not something I'm entirely used to when it comes to, or not, I am used to it, but it's not something I'm used to hearing in pop music directly, especially ones that are coming from a mainstream singer. Um, so I did end up liking the album itself in whole. I feel like it was a very beautiful album. Um, wasn't nothing really pulled out of me of it other than the emotional I like the ballads more than the actual like upbeat songs but this one is is, is actually kind of the is a little bit of the opposite I feel like uh, yeah I feel like it's a little bit the opposite I feel like this album actually kicks in more of a I feel like they wanted they wanted to lean into more of a um liberationness of their of their queerness, of who they are, and who they want to represent in this album. It felt, it does feel way freer. It does feel way like, fuck it, I'm going to give you what I, who I am and what I am. And I've grown way more into myself. Now I'm more confident. This, these things about my weight, these things about my singing, these things about being, just mistaking me for a black guy. It's not anymore. Like, you know who I am now, you know? And I know who I am, mo which is more important. And that's what I want to showcase. And that's what I feel like they're doing in this space. So let me go over some of the, the album. Majority of the album I do like. The end was the issue for me. Like after, um, I think I can actually say this. Yeah, the second half of it was kind of meh. But let me get you in this idea of what's going on in my mind with this. So I know that Jesse Reyes has helped out with this album a good portion of it. Um... I feel, I'm still trying to feel out her. I feel like she's really great. I, f I feel like she's, I feel like she's great songwriter. But at the same time, there's something, I don't know why I can't pull myself into her songs herself. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm trying my best. I'm trying. If anybody is a huge Jesse Reyes uh, singer, please help me navigate how to get into her. Because I really want to like her. But I feel, and I feel like I love everything outside of her own music, but her own music. So I need, I need help in getting that space. Anyway, let's go into this. So starting off with Love Me More is literally them saying, or Sam saying that they want to be loved, they want to love themselves more and taking that love and put it inwards for themselves, you know, going, um, pretty simple enough. I thought the song was pretty simple, um, no God, I feel like that's when we actually get into the meat of stuff, where they're talking about the idea of, it feels like they're talking to a bigot themselves. Like, they're saying, like, hey, you, I know you're saying all these things, but you know you're not a God either. You know you're not, your pedestal you're putting yourself on above me is nothing. That's just literally your ego and your ego yourself, you know? And I'm trying to meet you halfway with this and kind of tell you because I care kind of thing. It feels like... Sam is coming from more of a compassionate direction with a space of, just so you know, this isn't, like, it's, like, compassionate but firm. And I think that's really nice. Um, going into the next one, Hurting Interlude, which talks about the idea of, which is actually very interesting, the idea of, I'll just read it, it says, having to lie, I feel, is the saddest and the ugliest part of being a homosexual. Um, and they talk about the ideas like when you get your heart broken, you don't have another person you can kind of go to and talk about that and like 
this person broke my heart, no, no, no. like, you don't really have that, especially, I feel like it's a more of a nod towards gay men, I feel like definitely in that space, because I feel like I've seen a lot of lesbians have way more support when it comes to if they're, their heart's being broken, or they need a, a, a base of friends to talk to, I feel like it doesn't really happen as hard when it comes to gay men, because in that space, we're, I don't know, there's a weird space where we don't really want to talk about our feelings, and maybe it's a men direction in general, but I feel like there's a weird space of, it feels like there's a nuance that's added to it that's not, that's a little more purposely careless, like, purposely indifferent, more than being, where the male, where the straight male direction, it feels like it's a mix between, like, I'm not trying to not care, it's more the fact that just, just how we think, how we see things, you know? If I, if I was had permission to care, I would definitely do so. It feels like that. I feel on this side, it's like, I could care, but I'm choosing not to, kind of thing. It feels, my own opinion about it. So going into losing you, it feels like it's a disco response to that, and it's pretty much these, uh, like, they are begging for this person not to leave them. And I feel like it's a very vulnerable state, but it also takes a nod to hurting interlude of just like, you don't have, they, like, Sam doesn't have any other person to run this by and say, like, okay, I can have that person friends, like, hey, you know what? Just let it go. Just let it go. Like, fuck that person. Like, just let it go. You know, like, there's, other, there's a better, there's a better life out there, blah, blah, blah. But Sam may not have that in this narrative of the song. So they're saying, like, please don't leave me. Please, I'll do anything. But it's, it sucks, you know? Um, anyway, do like the song. I love the disco direction of it. I was very surprised. That was going to be more of a slow begging. Um, going to Perfect featuring Jesse Her or Reyes. I feel like this song is talking about the idea of wanting a meaningful relationship and wanting to kind of do kind of over the whole sleeping around kind of thing. What's a little something more? And I love the quote, of I wear my flaws like jewelry and I'm dripping. I feel like <laughs> dripping. I feel like it's one of those um it's just it's nice little like it's this is who I am and I love who I am, flaws and all. So I need you to like that too. Um this is a very slow and sexy song. Um which kicks off the sexy song. So we go into Unholy with uh Ken Petrus and I feel like that one's a really good song. I feel like it's short just for a TikTok, which sucks, because I fucking hate TikTok in that space of what they did to music. We'll talk about that later. Um, but this situation is really great. I love seeing Kim in this, and she's in her element, of course. And they won a Grammy for this. So bam, take that straight, people. Um, going into the next song, How to Cry. Another one that's very nods to no god was just like, oh, you're really giving us some good perspectives I don't think I see as often. Um, this one talks about the idea of a controlling and deceptive um, partner that Sam is part of. And what they're seeing is that this partner is this way because they haven't been taught to be vulnerable. So vulnerable usually is completely a nod to the whole male um side of things where a lot of us weren't taught to be vulnerable, to cry, to express emotion. Because I feel like if that was the case, then a lot of people would understand how the male nuances of who we are. And I feel like as much as we try to, there's a lot of nasty things that goes on to like nasty things that men have done and have are doing. There are nuances to a lot of spaces of other people where they still, where society including women as well, will still knock down the vulnerable male person if they want to, if they decide to go in that space of being more vulnerable. It feels like society isn't like that. And men also have contributed a lot to it. And I feel like, but that space concludes into the space of just like, hence, it goes into a space where the other opposite of not showing your emotions is to take it out in something. And that's where it goes to. And it's, and I feel like in that space where he sees, he kind of sees that, he sees the connection of where all this is coming from. But with that said, he does not want to be part of it anymore. <laughs> or sorry, sorry. They don't want to be a part of it anymore. And I think that that's the whole space of it. Of They're like, I see what's going on. I see the connection, how this started. I see where it's ending and how it gone to that space. But, and I wish you the best. I really understand where this is coming from. I have sympathy for you. 
with that said, I have to do, I have to move on with my own life too and remove myself from this. Sorry. Kind of thing. Um, it's another nod to, uh, trying to meet you half or being compassionate, but firm. And I really love that they do that. Um, six shots is okay. This is where we get into the other songs by Roma that I really didn't really care for. Six shots that that was okay. I did acknowledge the sexiness, but I felt like it just didn't really go anywhere for me. Give me, I really, really, really want to like this song because the production's really nice. But, and I know they threw coffee into this too, and I felt like that was going to be a winner for me, and coffee kills it, but it just wasn't for me. Um, Dorothy, I understand, I don't know why it was called, I understand the idea of Dorothy, but I don't really, I feel like it was, I wish there was more to it. Um, I'm not here to make friends featuring Calvin Harris and Jesse Harris. This one is, uh, if you listen to my earlier, um, video with Kembra's new album, The Reckoning. She has a song called GTL, or GLT. Um, we're pretty much talking about the same thing, was just like, these guys out here will will completely make it seem like they're into you, only to turn it around and be like, you know, I'm not really looking for friends. I'm just looking for a friend. I just want to be friends. And I was like, this is not friends if we're fucking. This is not friends if we're doing these things. Like, there's, there's, there's a lot of new, there's a lot of spaces that you're doing that does not really equal friends. So, no, we shouldn't really, but to turn it back, to pull it back, you're like, you know, I just want to be friends. And I was like, you could also say, you know what, I wasn't really into this. Let's just, like, sorry. If you want to be friends, we can be friends. If not, I totally understand. Kind of thing. Like, that's why I feel like more people should stay in that space. So he's pretty much saying, like, or they pretty much are saying, like, I don't want, I don't want friends. I'm not looking for friends. I'm looking for love. I'm looking for love. If you're looking for friends, get the fuck away from me. Like, unless, we're, unless I'm, li like, we're on the same page of, we are friends, you know? Not, let's mess around, but then call it friends, you know? Um, going into number 12 with the, uh, Gloria is a hem made by Sam, and oh my god, it's a nice little nod to him. It feels, it feels like they are reclaiming the Christianity part of their earlier lives where they were in church and singing and they loved the hymns that were going on, which is something like for me, like I loved, I loved the songs in church. Like I used to love them. And so being, be, hearing it, it's a beautiful, it's, it, they're beautiful. It's harmony. It's beautiful songs, but it's surrounded by a couple, it's surrounded by bigots and there's our bigots inside that space that makes it very hard for queer people to be in that space especially pure people that do have faith. And I think that sucks. So I feel like this is a nice little nod for them saying like, here you go. Here is reclaiming that one, that moment of reclaiming of this, of those hems and those things that we actually do love that are actually validly beautiful. Um, finally going to the last song is my bittersweet song that I do like, but I hate that Ed Sheeran's part of it. Um, it's about the idea of, of being an ally and love from both sides and what it's like and how we're just all alike in one sit, one setting. And it's, I'm, I'm a little jaded in that space because I lived in the 2000s and in the 2000s we did Queer for the Straight, uh, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy where we bent over backwards to try to be cool and try to show the, the straights that we're cool with you guys. Look at, look at, we're cool too. We can do what you can do. We're just like you. When we should have done, fuck you. This is what we are. We like to do this. Sorry that you can't be a part, like, sorry that that's something that you don't really understand, but maybe you should learn something then. Instead of us trying to meet them halfway, because I think it should be the opposite way. They should be meeting us halfway. And I feel like in this space, I do understand. I do understand the idea. I understand their friends and everything. But in my head, um, to get back on my soapbox, is that it just feels... We sh I understand the ally uh, allies, but I do feel like we need to remember that we are the minority. And we are the ones that should be listened to less than trying to validate allyism. I think ally, I, allyship, I think allyship is there. It should, it shouldn't be a cookie. You shouldn't deserve a cookie for being an ally. It's some, it's a human, being nice to humans should be a thing you should do in general. But anyway, I digress. So this album has been a really great ride. There's some, there's a good chunk, there's a chunk of five songs I don't really care for, but all in all, I feel like this is a great step up from, um, 
not step up. I feel like it's a great next chapter after uh, Love Goes. I give this album a... I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Leave a comment below tell me what you thought. If you like this album, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. If you have your own thoughts, let me know that too. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell too. Get more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.